Hello, this is Steven Vickers. Today I'm going to be going through using the Leica CS35 with the GS15 in the field. So first thing we have to do is to connect to the GS15. Um, to do that, just like in the previous videos, devices and printers, and I can see I've already got it uh, set up, so I can connect using ad hoc network. Now I can go to Leica Captivate, change the instrument from total station to GS. I can see if it connects automatically or not. There we are. You can already see we're talking to nine satellites. Connected to GS sensor. Okay, so just like this I'm talking to satellites and I can roughly tell my position. Uh, you can see we've got a, uh, an accuracy estimate. So you can see this is a fairly high inaccuracy. A way to get more accurate position measurements is to uh, essentially occupy a point for longer time, so get more readings. So that could be 30 seconds, it could be a minute, it could be uh, several hours. Uh, another way to get better accuracy is to talk to another um, GNSS receiver that is also talking to the same satellites you are, uh, and then between the two of them, you can cancel out a lot of the air you're seeing, a lot of the ambiguity or um, interference introduced by the, uh, the atmosphere. So if I want to see more data about any of these, I can click them. So, if I know I'm going out to the field with the GNSS unit, one thing I'll do is get aerial imagery from either the internet or ArcMap and load it into the uh, CS35. In previous videos, I showed you how to set up a job in ArcMap with the correct coordinate system, as well as loading in aerial imagery for exporting as a JPEG with an associated world file. Uh, I also, in another video, showed you loading that aerial imagery into the CS35 and setting up a job with the correct coordinate system to match the one used in ArcMap. To go through some of that quickly again, you can create a new job. I'm just going to name it, uh, let's say, Test5. And the coordinate system, the last one I used, is right here. The Modified Traverse Mercedes Zone 9, which is here in Ontario. The North America Datum of 1983, which is uh, the one we'll be using, and this projection right here, uh, as well as this GeoID model for our elevation above sea level. So I'll create that job, and you can see here if I go to view, there's nothing here. But again, if I go to 3D viewer here, I'll see nothing, even though I'm tracking my current position. Go to measure and then zooming extents, I'm able to find my current position. Here, I can see my current position with the little GS15 icon, as well as the aerial imagery I loaded uh, in previous videos. You can access them here through settings and object display. Going to background image, you can choose whether to use any, or going to images, you can turn different ones on or off. So here I'm able to see where I currently am with aerial imagery from 2017, or because I do have a few others loaded in here, I could show you where I currently am in reference to Carlton in 1971, or 1963, or 1961. I'm going to stick with the images I loaded previously. So here I can see my position. I can change my antenna height or how I want to name a point. I can also do some line work or different coding. Uh, you can see my estimated accuracy here. I can improve it by taking longer on the point, but uh, a better way to do that generally is to uh, establish a connection to another GNSS receiver that is also tracking the same satellites that you are. Between the two of them, you can eliminate a lot of the uh, ambiguity or atmospheric air.
One such station that is publicly available in the Ottawa Gatineau area can be found here. I'm going to translate this page. So here you can see. So if you are going to do any work in these areas or the surrounding areas, I'd suggest uh, establishing a connection to them to improve your accuracy. So I've already set this up in, uh, in this CS35 unit, but I'll show you them quickly in case it's not set up on yours. So exiting out of uh, the measurement app, I'll stop any sort of raw data logging that might be going on. I can go to settings, connections, all other connections. So here in connection settings, I can see that my CS35 is talking to the GS15 over Bluetooth. Under GS connections, I can see that uh, I've got GS internet and RTK rover uh, set up. So this is just to, to initiate using the internet on the CS35 for the GS15 to receive its corrections. Um, the internet can either be Wi-Fi or you could be using your cell phone as a hotspot or you can put a SIM card into the CS35. So you'd want to make sure you've got these settings. Internet connection, GS port 3, Telet GSM, GFU 28. And then for RTK Rover, using the GS Internet 1, and RTCM version 3, that's the one we'll want to use for this. There's lots of different options. You can see here RTCM v3 as well as the CMR plus option. Now that that's set up, I can uh, set up using the actual Gatineau reference station. So this icon here will get you the RTK data link. You can see I have all these different options for starting the stream, for setting up a profile or a server or a mount point. I'll go to server mount point and I can click uh, so that I can select one or create one or edit it. You can see going to edit, I've just named it GAT RTK. I've used the address and port which are made available here through the uh, MERNGNSS website. And not using intro. I'm connected to Wi-Fi currently, so uh, every once in a while I'll connect or disconnect. If I was having this error in the field, what I do is use my cell phone or a SIM card in the CS35 unit to make sure that my connection wasn't interrupted. So I set up which server to connect to. So now that I've set up my server slash mount point, and in previous steps I went to settings, connections, and set up my RTK connection not through the rover wizard, but through all other connections here. Now that that's all set up, I can start streaming that uh, RTK data. So I'll click that. It does not seem to be uh, to be helping. So it could be the Gatineau station is down. It could be uh, there's some sort of other interference issue with the Gatineau station. Um, or maybe I did mess up the settings. So I'll have to try this again at a later date and see if I get better results. Anyway, the, that's the basics of how you can connect to the GS15 and uh, track your current position and start taking measurements. For now, I'm going to ignore my, uh, my 3D quality and I'll just measure a few points. The longer I occupy a point while measuring, the more position measurements are taken. Um, by occupying it for longer periods of time, I'm able to reduce uh, some of the 3D air. I'm going to click stop. 
now I can store or I can uh, continue to change some things with the antenna height, with the point ID, or I can just delete it. Point stored. There. So you can see I have stored that point, and as I continue to walk on, my GS15 icon is moving as well. Uh, another option, by going to Function and Settings, I can set it up to automatically measure points based on distance, time, height, or such. Right now I'll just set it to distance, click OK. Now I can start, and as I move along, it will automatically measure points. Ah, I accidentally started a point measurement right before I tried doing auto points, and that has uh, interrupted. So I'll stop this point ID measurement. You'll see my point will jump. I'm not going to store this one. Point stored. So instead I'm going to delete that. Now, I will go to auto point ID, and I can start. So it's automatically measured one point to start with and I'm going to start walking over here. And as you can see, it's measuring multiple points based on, uh, I believe, a change of one meter. I could also set this up to time. Uh, so this is a good way to track uh, your position if um, you say you've got the GPS unit on a car or a bike or a backpack something like that so you can track a, uh, a path. You can see as I'm going through the trees my position is jumping all over the place. The trees are blocking my line of sight to the satellites and thus my position is getting more inaccurate. Now to illustrate how buildings also interfere with your line of sight to the, uh, to the sky and the satellites, I'm going to go directly against the building. So I am right against this wall here. And I've completely lost my lock. One thing I can do in this sort of scenario where I want to measure the wall but can't get close to it without losing the GPS accuracy is that I can measure a point offset from the wall. So if I measure a point, say, 15 meters away from the wall, but directly perpendicular to it, or parallel to it, I can infer where the, the wall is. Uh, I won't get into that here, but uh, that is an option. So I'll stop that auto point measurement and exit out of this now. So that's a quick overview of uh, starting to use the GS15 and a few of the things you can do. Uh, in future videos we'll get more into coding and line work and using the GNSS unit with uh, total station measurements as well.